In this video, I want to talk about how hackers, including myself, look for vulnerabilities that are considered of high or critical impact. And I think a lot of it has to do with mindset. And this whole mindset thing comes into play when you start shifting it from a finding vulnerability type A, type B, type C, those could be your SSS, IDOR, SSRF, open redirects, to an objective. And I know that's a lot to unpack, so let me explain what I mean by an objective. An objective could be a chain of vulnerabilities that is going to actually have a higher impact. A lot of times people mistake RCE for just a vulnerability class within itself, which it could be your old school RCE where you can just inject a Linux command or you can do some code execution in there. Those still exist, but I think something like RCE is also an objective of finding a component through a chain of vulnerabilities where you can actually get access to execute commands. Another good example of that is account takeover and account takeovers could be actually happening in a number of different ways, including XXS, it could be IDOR, but it could also be a lot of different formats of account takeover that you may not actually be able to think. And I'm gonna unpack all of this in just a little bit, but do me a favor before we go further into the video, drop me a comment, let me know what you wanna see first. Maybe it's account takeover, RCE, or just maybe a misconfiguration. Drop me a comment, let me know which one you wanna see first so I can kind of prioritize the one that gets the most comments. But now let's talk about more of these objectives. These objectives could be very, very specific to an actual target when you're hacking. And what that means is you have to spend a little bit of time understanding what is this company's threat model. Threat modeling takes a little bit of time, but it all comes down to understanding your target. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of maybe just a couple of bug bounty programs. For example, Airbnb can be a prime example of that because you can actually come up with a lot of different ways to create a threat model based on their different applications that they have. So for example, if you look at the applications, they have what they call hosting, which is where people could host their Airbnbs and these are the people that are selling you a room or a place to stay. And on the other side, you have the guest. For the guest portion of it, well, anything that you can leak the information for those users, including reservations, including their potential addresses, where they live, credit card information, their date of birth, and that sort of stuff could be an objective that you can achieve based on a number of different vulnerabilities versus as a host, you also could look at reservations and maybe see if you can access other people's reservations to maybe modify them or maybe modify someone's booking and so on. Those are just really, really high level ways of looking at it, but it gets a little bit more interesting as more and more you look at bug bounty programs or just companies that you want to hack into. That was just an example of doing a threat modeling exercise for just on a data level of the application. This is the data that is technically considered to be sensitive, that they don't want to leak. How do I achieve that? That is our objective, that is what we want to do. But there's also looking at the different areas and places that could actually potentially have vulnerabilities. A lot of times what I personally do, and I've talked about this throughout all my videos, is I look at a lot of different instances or environments, are what I call them, on a particular company. So that just means to look for some of these dev sites, API sites, and kind of just also looking at places where I know by default, based on my experience, have vulnerabilities. This includes looking for the DevOps sites. Maybe they have some CI, CD pipeline work that could be exposed. Maybe they have a GitLab instance that I can access. And those are the kind of things that you use threat model from an infrastructure perspective. So you want to take a look at all of your recon data and look at how is everything being named and what are some of these things that you can actually access and hit and see if those have potential vulnerabilities. You can also take this as far as looking at a specific backend system or software, for example, Tomcat or IIS, which are very, very well known to have some juicy information and inputs that you can look for or techniques, including path traversal or the ISTLD that you can very much focus on. And that becomes your way of having an objective to find assets that are in that realm and look for vulnerabilities. The backend side could get very, very tedious and we'll talk about that in just a bit, but those are just a number of different ways you can threat model and say, this is what I want to look for, which brings me into our next part of this video, which is your style of hacking. This is the style that you want to hack in. I think throughout the past year of how many videos I've made, I've actually talked a lot about creating that style of your own. I used to be a huge, huge recon person. I love doing recon and I used to have a lot of data on a lot of different companies. And eventually I just realized that that's not for me and I don't enjoy it. And most of my good findings come from me ripping apart an application and then really understanding what it communicates to, what are the APIs, 
what are the different calls and just kind of breaking that apart for myself it doesn't mean that once in a while those apis don't land on a windows server or maybe on a tomcat instance that i can traverse in and out of and find information that's really, really sensitive for me but it just means that i want to focus on a core application and just make my way and map out the entire application without doing a lot of automation and nuclei templates and looking for CVs, for example. But hacking style goes even further than this. And I wanna give you two really, really good examples of two hackers that I've had the pleasure to work with, one being Sam Curry, aka ZLZ. If you look at a lot of his write-ups, what he's doing is he's doing an amazing job of threat modeling. What are these companies that I wanna hack on? What is considered sensitive to them? And what are some applications that have access to these exact things and his style of hacking a lot of times include going after apis finding ways to authenticate to applications and then seeing if these apis have any vulnerabilities and a lot of time if you look at his write-ups actually he has a lot of path traversals and he's actually done an amazing talk on there i'll link it down below but he looks for a lot of path traversals within apis and finds a way to leak information that's really really sensitive so if you look at some of his most recent write-ups for example in his points.com you see that he's doing a lot of fuzzing within the api he finds ways to actually traverse in and out of the api find hidden api endpoints that are not accessible through the ui itself and then he finds a way to leak information that belongs to other customers including their PII, including name, including date of birth, their credit card information, and so on. And for the car hacking stuff, a big effort that he put into was understanding how is the remote authentication happening? What are those APIs? How do I access them and log into them? And how do I leak other people's information or get access to them? That goes way beyond the scope of this video, but I want to give you that as an example. His style is I want to hack into this industry. What is important to this industry? And how do I leak that information or gain that objective? So the objective, for example, for the car was, how do I unlock cars for points.com was, how do I leak people's information and just making that work day in and day out. The second example is somebody like Justin, AKA Rhino Raider. I saw him have a huge shift in his hacking and I've been lucky enough to see actually Justin hack through the past couple of years, both as someone that worked at life hacking events and have been attending the life hacking events, but also as on the sidelines of just working with him. I've noticed that he looks for these different vulnerabilities, but he always has an objective in mind. And a lot of times what I've noticed based on this is account takeover. And if you saw his recent video on the redacted, I had him come on the channel and talk about his redacted series and he looked at a lot of post message stuff that were very very complex and he's focused on a lot of these vulnerabilities that are client side that could potentially either lead to an account takeover or could lead into leaking their information based on a client side of vulnerabilities so i think it's a really good place to highlight these two amazing hackers that have done really really cool work and talk about their style of hacking how they threat model for these companies and then and what objectives they set in order to find vulnerabilities honestly that's also something that i've caught myself doing is i do a lot better when i tell myself my objective is to find a way where i could do x that means i want to leak a user's information you can also set that objective with hey i want to find xss and just in a, in a larger application you can look for that xss payload throughout a lot of different components of that side but making an objective based on a vulnerability type is a lot harder to achieve versus giving it a large objective of saying I want to achieve leaking information for a user and just looking for different ways that you can do that. So with that said, I would love to make a live example of this, but that is all up to you to drop me a comment. Give me some ideas of what are some objectives that you want to see. I gave you two really good ones, one being account takeover, the other one being an RCE. Drop a comment. Let me know what do you want to see first and hopefully I get to make that for you in the upcoming weeks. All right, that's it. I will talk to you guys soon. Peace.